What's going on guys? It's Wednesday and this episode is brought to you by Division Street Auto. Go see my man George. He'll take care of you. If you mention this ad, he'll give you 10% off the labor and that's anything that's wrong with your vehicle. But not only does he do, do mechanical work, he also does inspections and a plethora of other things. Go see him. Give him a call. 401-723-7080. Don't forget to mention this ad. This episode is also brought to you by AJ Drywall and Plaster. They do addition, storefronts, commercial, acoustical ceilings, pretty much anything and everything drywall and plaster. You can contact my friend Joe at 401-323-9252. Love you, Joe. Joe's the man. He's funny as shit. It's also brought to you by Top Showroom and Gallery. They do everything lighting. Any kind of lighting, outdoor lighting, landscape lighting. They do house calls and consulting, all styles and trends. You can contact them at 401-861-0695. And last but not least, especially not least, our friend Dory at Onyville Tire. If you have any tire issues or you need new tires, you need balancing, you need computerized wheel balancing, go see Dory. She's very, very good. She's very personable. She's a good poker player too. You can contact her at 401-421-1800 or visit her down at 86 Plainville Street in Providence. Let's go. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. What's up, Mr. Yo. J. O'Leary? See, what we, were just, we were just getting into is that a fucking mountain lion attack on that dude. I don't know if anybody, you know, that's fucking crazy. Seen that article? So this hiker is just hiking or jogging, whatever the fuck he's doing, but a mountain lion attacks him from the back. A mountain. It was 80, a gay mountain lion. Eighty pound mountain lion just fucking mounts him, bites his face, bites mounts his, him, <laughs> mounts him. Well, you said gay line. I immediately thought like fucking mounts him, mounts him, and yeah. fucks him in the ass. So he fucking bites his face, dude. Bites his wrist. Like, ooh, you're kinky. And then just fucking somehow ninety percent. Both of us would be dead if that happened. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I do know. You don't have to know. I might I know. bite him a mountain lion. You back. might bite him and then you die. I'm not saying you wouldn't fight back, but you would die. I got pretty so serious dude, jaw pressure. Well, this this dude was obviously probably pretty fit. He's out jogging or hiking. Like, we don't jog or hike. Yeah, but runners are bitches, dude. They're like thin. True, and true. Shout out to Maurice. Shout out to Maurice. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, kidding. <laughs> so, fucking, so I guess, you know what, and then he's able to stop this mountain lion from biting him. And he doesn't, I thought he had a knife. And then fucking George just told me that he didn't have a knife to choke the mountain lion out. Yeah, that's crazy. That's fucking insane, dude. Choke. First of all, you got to be a ruthless motherfucker to just not. We have two reactions when faced with that kind of situation. Fight or flight. I feel like a lot of people are just going to curl up right there and hope it stops. You know, or try to like, you got to be a real. It's definitely not just going to stop. Exactly. But you have to be a, a certain kind of fucking savage Christ killing motherfucker to choke that mountain lion. Like, at what point are you just like, nah, that's it. He stopped biting me, but I'm he's he's not ready to I'm not ready oh, to yeah. give up, you know. I mean I used to do rap certifications for canine handlers like, you know, police and to feel a dog bite through a rap, like on your arm mm. and then not only that, the power like their whole body is one big muscle. Mm. So like a mountain lion is like you're it's not like, you know, you're fighting a house cat. You're fighting this giant well, just a cat one in big general. Muscle. Yeah, like a cat like in general. Cats are more vicious. It's like a snake, you know? Like a snake is one big muscle. Tougher than dogs, right? We can I can't even imagine. That? Would we agree on that? What's that? Cats, cats are tougher than dogs? Yeah. No, no, no. Super no, no, more no. savage than dogs, dude. Like well, it depends have, on like, what way. Well, just pound for pound, bro. I would, if you had to, if you I had the know. choice, hey, I have to fight a dog or a cat and they weigh the same amount, you should always prefer to fight the dog. Uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm telling you, you didn't know. Why? Didn't know. Now you, you <laughs> well, didn't know, but now well, you know. Well, at least back it, that think, up. <laughs> think of it these, this way, right? Yeah. An 80-pound dog. What, name an 80-pound dog. Any kind of dog that's 80 pounds. Or bigger? You 80 mean? pounds. Roughly 80 pounds. Rottweiler. That's a that's a pretty small Rottweiler. Rottweilers are usually, usually heavier than that. Usually a buck change. Yeah. So let's say like a... Yeah. Like, all right. For example, a Rottweiler. If you had to choose, what would you rather be attacked by? A Rottweiler or a fucking mountain lion? 
Well, a mountain lion just sounds badass. If you put mountain in front of Rottweiler, a mountain well, Rottweiler. Rottweiler, you sound like a retard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you sound like. No, it sounds more badass. Right. So think of you have just a house cat. What's a house cat weigh? George, what's the average house cat weigh? Fucking, Fucking three ten pounds. pounds? Ten, ten pounds. What's a ten pound dog weigh? Ten pounds. <laughs> what? Good answer. Good answer. What? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog? What kind of dog would be a ten pound dog? Like a little Chihuahua or a something? A wiener, like one a of those. Chihuahua. Think of it, Chihuahua. Let's use yeah, Chihuahua because they're a little more vicious. So you walk in, there's a Chihuahua that wants to fuck you up. What's it gonna do to you? Sniff your balls. Seriously, what is it? What is it gonna do to you? What, if it really wanted to hurt you, what would it do? I have no fucking idea. It would bark and probably run at your ankles and bite your ankles. Now, if a cat, Not really, it probably would try to. I mean, if it was a stray. You're talking about a wild dog? T- yes. The the most vicious the African type, wild dogs? Hey, the most vicious type of chihuahua that you can think of. What could it possibly no, do I don't to know. you? Not much. But now a cat, dude, a cat, before you can even blink your eyes, will be fucking up the curtain on your shoulder, clawing your face out. You know, like they're a different breed, bro. They're killers, dude. Cats are fucking killers, man. Well, they're both, you know, wild no, animals that were domesticated. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you had the choice between fuck, fucking fighting a know. chihuahua... <laughs> between fucking a chihuahua? <laughs> fighting a chihuahua or fighting a house cat, I would take the chihuahua every time. The fucking cats, they got that natural instinct to just fucking claw, claw you the shit eat. out of you. You know, they're carnivores, bro. Cats are carnivores. Dogs aren't. Well, dogs have a natural instinct to bite. Yeah, but your chances just fare way better against a dog I don't know. Cat. You do I don't know. know. I just told you. Well, I don't know if I believe that. You don't have to believe it. You, you <laughs> fucking think that the sky is not blue, but it is, but, you know. I mean, you're, we're both entitled to our own opinions. I can yeah. force you to be right. I um, mean, I think of, like, you know, obviously, if, if pound for pound, size for size, I, I'm not sure, because, like, you know, I, I interact with domesticated cats and dogs, so, I mean, it's like kind of like, it's hard to imagine, I mean, like, a Russian bear dog or a, you know, a Mastiff, like, they're fucking huge. Pit how bulls much are they what? Uh, Russian bear dogs, I think they can go, like, buck 80. Buck fifty, right. buck eighty. So now, would you rather get attacked by one of those or a tiger? What exactly? There's just a fucking. Well, if there, cats if there, are no, just hold on. on a whole nother but level. You're comparing apples and oranges. Can you find anything that might if you if you help us settle this? Like, what's what's the fucking animal, bro? No, what put it this way: if you if you take a up. wild Russian bear dog or a, the Italian Labrador, I think it's called, or whatever, or a wild pit bull that's not domesticated. I don't know which one. I, I'm f- kind of fucked either way. I don't. Yeah, but the cat is just. When you say like a mountain more, lion, you're talking more about agile, agile. First of all, feral. They wild. have more. Well, let's look at this. They have more weapons too. You know their claws. Dogs, Dogs have really, claws. They're not slashing you though. That's not how they're made. That's not their instinct. That's not how they fight. I think you're really putting characteristics to a certain animal. Like they Cats. both have claws. They both have teeth. They both. Mm, you know, if they're wild. When was the last time a, a fucking a dog attacked somebody and it slashed them in the face with their paw i have no idea you know it's a little <laughs> cute little paw a fucking little dog cute little paw, paw. <laughs> fucking cats fucking got like these rip wolverine like fucking, fucking head off fangs on their hands dude yeah i mean yeah i don't know they actually sharpen them every day too where dogs so don't they, do that they know bro well they i think know. they do right isn't that they the point of them like on. they know what the fuck is going on tearing on sh- anyway so this fucking cat this 80 pound yep. mountain lion tries to hump this dude he chokes the shit out of it after getting slashed, or he, actually the cat bit him on his face, Yep, and the fucked up his arm or wrist or something like that, and this dude still straight up like choked this cat out. Like, how badass are you? Like, who even thinks of that? Like, oh, I'm going to choke the... I'm going to choke this cat and take its wallet. what that does for a living. He probably runs around and chokes cats. I don't know. But they say that less than 20 people have been killed by cats, wild, I guess, mountain lions. <laughs> by what cats. a stupid stat to know right now. Less than 20 people in the last 100 years. That can't be true. That can't That's be what true, it said. I bet, you, I bet you more people in India are killed by fucking cats a year than 20. Oh, no, no, in Colorado. North America. Oh, yeah. okay. North America you specify, in bro. In India, there's fucking leopards running around. Like in Cranston. <laughs> But uh, so in, since 1990, there was three people that were killed and 16 injured. That was just, I mean, that's so what, 30 years? Three people? Nice. One every 10 years? It's just rare. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's like. Oh, yeah, no shit. Super rare, bro. I mean, usually, I according to what this guy's saying in the article, I guess a park ranger or whatever, cats 
uh, mountain lions or whatever. They don't they don't even fuck with humans. They just try to like run away and they're smart. You get fucking choked out. You know, you run into the wrong guy that studied a little MMA, puts you in a fucking yeah, no choke, shit, man. Fucking choking cats by your own. I wonder what he did. Did it, did he just leave it after that? I feel like if I fucking choked out a cat, bro, I'd throw that thing over my shoulder and walk back to my village. Home. Oh, I would. <laughs> like, I would hold, just like cut its it head off my head and just walk <laughs> yeah. around with its head. Oh, I fucking put it. I'd wear it. You know, like fucking uh, like a mink. Yeah, or I just put it right around my shoulders, like ah. Uh, and I would be like, no more technology. We're going back to the old days. We're fucking eating cat Dude, tonight, that's baby. Fucking badass. Like, I can't even imagine. Show. Send him an email, George. Let's see if we can get him here. Yeah, we should. Be like, Dude, what made you think about choking a cat? What other crazy shit's going on, Jay? Man, fuck. There's a lot of crazy shit going on. How about Twitter? Did you guys hear about that? Of course you did, because you guys are the ones that told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so forced. It sounds so forced. I can't even lie. No, fuck the Twitter thing. Tell Nobody us about Twitter. Hear. Nobody wants to hear that uh, transgender shit, man. It's oh, no, there. it's not about transgender. It's yeah, about Twitter. Dead naming. Let's uh, let's move past that. What? Why? No, because this is not about transgender. Okay. This is about Twitter. Like, Let me see. What you got? Twitter being a private company can ban your account, right? Because you're dead naming. Is that what they call it? Like, mis- misnaming? I don't know what the fuck they call it. Transgenders. Like, I get it. Who cares? I, I don't care if you're transgender or whatever. That has nothing to do with anything. It's the whole fact that Twitter is pretty much censoring you mm. from saying certain things. So I can call somebody fat. I can call them ugly. I can call them stupid, dumb. You're a fucking idiot. Whatever. That's okay. So you don't think Twitter should be allowed to, to censor you, to ban you? As a private company? Yeah, absolutely. They, they should be allowed. I think cool. it's, you know, I think it sucks to a certain degree because they're just so big. But right, I mean, they're, you, they're almost looked at now is, you know, and, and the CEO uh, who was on Rogan the other day even said it that he feels like it should be more like a right to be able to use the Internet to share your speech like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. They're not more like private services. They're, they're almost like utilities at this point. You know, like everybody has the right to one or, you know, to. Yeah, it's just so, so big. Big. everybody's using yeah, it. They're just so huge that and it's crazy because it's it's unfortunate if you build a company and it gets so gigantic that the government should be able to interject or shouldn't be able to interject and get involved, but you know, when you're you're influencing that many people, I feel like that you know, there's got to be some reasonable uh, level of communication with you talking about like no, restriction not level or communication on um, like terms, you know, like how you always have the terms and conditions. It's got to be there. Well, I mean, I, I guess you. It, it can, so you you said something though. You said they're like dead. Um, you know, you can get banned from dead naming people. I mean, you kind of have to. Not everybody knows what that means. You kind of have to explain what that is. Yeah, dead naming is kind of mischaracterizing, right? I, I'm not 100 percent sure, it, but someone's gender, yeah, or like what, referring to them as you know what they previously exactly, were. That's exactly it. Okay, so like if if somebody's a transgen, if somebody yeah. turned into a woman, hmm. calling them a previous man or hey, well, you used to right. do this while you were a man. That'd and be... it's crazy because they don't even take into account the, that's what I think the, you know, a big issue is when you get censorship and people getting banned or kicked off of YouTube, whatever the case is, you can't have a rule like that, that just blanket statements, hey, if you do this, you're out. You know, you have to look at each situation for what it is, you know, and, and look at the context of it. I mean, if you always if you, go back to context, if, if you go, if you, you know, if you're just going around, you know trolling people and giving them shit and saying well haha you're not a real you know man you used to be a woman or vice versa then you're a schmuck whatever if they want to ban your account for hate speech it is what it is but if you're citing something very hate specific speech is made up too if you're citing something very specific and saying well hey J you know like hey janet you know i remember back in the day when you know before you had your your operation we used to do this and whatever the case is there's not any real malicious intent there you know that right, you're just be stating a fact or, you know, yeah. Yeah, you're just commenting. You're not trying to be malicious or venomous. Yeah, so it's, it's a real problem. And obviously, you know, Rogan had the, the CEO on the other day, and he got a lot of shit for not asking the right questions and really pressing the issue on. Because hey, that's what people wanted to know. Yeah, that's all people want to know. You know, what's, um, you know, and he didn't do any of that. And is very seldom does the majority of Rogan's viewers give him negative feedback right you know and this is one where i probably the only one i can recall where people were really like bro what the fuck like what was up with that episode you know what we want to hear you know the questions we want to ask and why are we being out. a bitch yeah like you, why are you, you know you pussy footed around them so it's probably because twitter's so big i mean there's such actually, an influence he actually um 
went out and apologized to everybody and kind of said, "Hey, oh, man, did he? Did, yeah, he's like, hey, I dropped the That's ball crazy. on this. Well, he's he's smart, you know. He realizes like, hey, there's you know, a PR like, factor there. Well, there's a level of not even just PR. Like, you know, your audience expects a level of um, what's probing and genuinity, genuinity, genuineness. <laughs> yeah, you know, so fucking your audience expects you to be genuine." And they expect you to be real. And when you tiptoe around the elephant in the room, it's kind of like being a phony. You know, so oh, he, very jumped, true. Out, he jumped out and apologized. And uh, he's going to have him. And the, the Twitter CEO is actually willing to come back on and but talk now, about that you, shit. You know, now you got to wonder if it's if it's staged, like, or, you know, like, hey, this time when you come back on, this is what I'm going to ask you about because I got I caught so much flack. So you can, like, kind of give your canned Prepare entry. For it. Yeah. As, as opposed to, you know, not no. that you want to necessarily well, put somebody on the spot, but you kind of do just to get the raw answer. Here's the deal, man. He's the CEO of Twitter, so he's obviously a smart dude. Yeah. And he was going on Rogan, so he's probably heard relevant episodes to what's going on with Twitter and the right. censorship. So he, if he was going to talk about that shit, he was already prepared the first time he went. Really, that lack of conversation happened because of Rogan not pressing for it. You know, I don't think it wow. has... I don't think he's going to be any more prepared the second time around than he would have been the first time. You understand what I'm saying? You're like talking about not, the Twitter CEO. Yeah, he's not going to go on Rogan's show not knowing how to answer certain questions. If he even plans on answering them strategically, you know, excuse me, he might just go on and be raw and be real about what's going on. Or he might not even be the guy that's responsible for making these decisions. I mean, think about how big Twitter is. You know, there's probably a whole team of little, you know, fucking like minions nerds and, and minions in a little yeah, yeah, dark yeah. office saying, you're banned, you're banned, you're banned, you broke that rule, you know. Right. So, who the fuck knows? He might bring those people on the show and so they can explain, you know, these are the professionals here. He's just fucking honest. You don't be whatever. real bitch, though, if he, and, and you know, people aren't stupid, obviously. They, they'll, they'll fucking pick it out a mile away. If he does ask the questions, but still kind of tiptoes, like he kind of, like indirectly kind of asks. Yeah. Just to kind of, he's trying to satisfy both mm. sides. I mean, that won't go over nah, well at he's all. He's going to come with examples and say, "Yeah, well, he hey, should." Here's, here's what Alex Jones said, and you banned him because of it. But here's an example from somebody that has a you know a left political view. He said, he the said the same the exact, exact same thing, but you didn't ban them. Why? You know, so that's really where he's going to go with it. Well, this you know what uh, the bigger picture is. Does. Or do Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of all of these privately owned companies, I mean, do they, you know, society, almost global society, kind of depends on it to some degree. People's businesses are based around this social platform. I mean, they could really fuck things up if they exercise their full private, you know, hey, we're a private company. We can do whatever the fuck we want. You know what I'm saying? Sort of like if Walmart said, hey, you know what? We're going to fucking raise the prices or drop... The well, actually, no, there's... But they can't do that, though. Yeah, Remember they can't monopolize his, like that. Yeah, but. Zuckerberg was in court recently, wasn't <clears> he, George? What was, the, what was the reason he was actually in court? Like, because why he, did he banned court? a lot of conservative... I don't know if that's why. That's like, like views. Facebook was actually in court, you know, like in front of a judge. They, there were hearings involved. Well, that was for I think it had something privacy. to do with like a data breach or yeah, it was them for, selling information, oh, right, to, to third-party companies. I thought it had companies. something to do with those two black ladies, their show... No idea what you're talking about. It was like kind of right-leaning. What are they called? Well, he was testifying Racist? in front of Congress for privacy Nazis? issues. Oh, I thought it was totally something different. No, no, that's what I mean. Because so. that was the same kind of time period that this show got banned from, you know, Facebook or something like that. And they were all up in arms like, what the fuck? Just well, because so we're right-wingers, right wing, right you, you don't There was support Cambridge us. Analytica, which is a company that actually got... Information from Facebook that right. had 87 million users' information on it, right. which is a total breach of privacy. Right. Stop yelling at me. Nobody's yelling, man. Just come know. correct, son. Just come correct. <laughs> he said, yeah, those black ladies that got kicked off? Like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Breach. You gotta, like, look it up. It's uh, like it was a data breach. <laughs> no, it was... Jay's I, like, it might we'll, have been the same we'll time. sell here? Black conservatives. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, that's what they... Oh, I forgot what they're called. Can you like look it up? That's what. He, <laughs> Can you like, save him here, please? <laughs> Can you please save him? <laughs> Somebody give me something. Help. Help. There was there was two black ladies. They had conservative views, and like they were like, I don't know, banned or something, or I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Speaking of fucking crazy ladies, um, these guys just told me before we came on the air about a woman that is being or was found guilty, or she's appealing the case now. 
Can you find out the actual detail, what state and everything? Yeah, she, but she no, the, so she was right. She the was Supreme found, Court of she was found guilty of was it manslaughter? Called? Manslaughter because she coerced Assisted. her she coerced her boyfriend into committing suicide, but she didn't actually do anything. You know, she didn't physically do anything to hurt him. So that's a really really sketchy blurry line that they're crying yeah. I'm, I'm surprised that she was convicted you know i feel like to be honest with you she- i mean suicide is a pretty individual thing eh, it doesn't get much more individual than that right you know? sort of like masturbation i mean somebody convince you can convince you to masturbate but ultimately you're making that decision to do it hmm that's I think true. it's a. I think it's a stretch. I think it's a. You know. I think it's a. Granted, a stretch. She's a cunt. Can we agree that she's yeah, a cunt? Yeah. Right. Let's get that you know, out of the way. Did, but you you can't really be going to jail just because you're an asshole. You know, because you're a mean person. You, you, you know, like at this point, are we? Is the law requ- And she was also charged, and the judge said because she didn't make any effort to save him. Right. You know, it's like, are you really mandated by the law to step in and be a hero? I, I mean, think you I, are. I think it's the right thing to do. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm not saying that I wouldn't do that. But it's tough to, you know, like hold somebody responsible for somebody else's actions. I mean, if if I have a, you know, well, if you have somebody in your life that commits suicide, I mean, wh- where do they draw the line? You know, if they go up back to every mean text that you sent to that person or said like, f- you know, fuck you, I don't need you in my life, whatever the case is. Right, in eighth grade, somebody said you were fat and ugly. Like, or- where is that? Where do they draw that line? You know, to me, and I'm sure what she said was pretty egregious and, and fucked up, but that's where it gets... You know, it gets crazy for me. Where was that? What state? Pennsylvania? No, Massachusetts, I think. I haven't read Mass. Because it was the Mass How Supreme long was she? Court. She was sentenced. She got convicted of manslaughter. So sentencing is after. But until sentencing, she's out. She's so free. she's free. Usually, I mean, I don't know. I wonder what the chances are of her winning this appeal. George is fucking looking at us now because the ice maker. The ice maker. <laughs> Dude, that shit. It's like, guys, these new microphones and cameras no, I think pick once up everything. I think once it's... I mean... Yeah, I don't know how many appeals that she actually has through the Supreme Court, right? I thought oh, that was like a done deal. I don't know. I'm not a fucking lawyer. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't know. John pro- Cashione, where are you? You're a lawyer. Tell us. I feel like you can appeal shit forever, right? Like actually, you, you can. You and can that's why. Appeal. That's the death penalty. Yes. That's a huge controversy with the death penalty because they say, you know what? If you put this person on death row, he's going to appeal for like the rest of his life. And, mm-hmm. that's and then he'll die naturally. The, yeah. Versus if you just fucking kill him. Yeah, but then you get to the Oh, no, wait. No. I'm sorry. Vice versa. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I, I'm not giving really somebody big, life versus killing them. The death penalty is tough, man. <clears throat> the death penalty is real tough with me, just because if you can ever, if we can go back and find evidence ever that one person was killed, one innocent person was killed, you know, due to the death penalty, and they later found out that person was innocent, the death. Oh, there, penalty I think there's numerous examples. Yeah, the death penalty shouldn't be on the table ever. Uh I don't know if I agree with that because That's there fine. are some people. That do not deserve to live. They just add no value to life at mm. all. I Meaning, if you're going around killing young kids and raping them and then dicing them up, like okay, hashtag like, dude, PizzaGate. You know, you might deserve to die. Well, like you, studies. you just you're not a. <laughs> you know. Mm. Well, what? there was a, there was a study run that in uh, since 1976 there was up to 1,500 people executed that may have been innocent. Right, because of DNA, they could have. That's insane, dude. I mean, that that, that that falls is... into the whole making murderer type. That's insane. Thing. Well, making a murderer is a fucking. It's not death, but no, and it's a documentary that skewed. is very skewed and fabricated for entertainment. You know, we can't really take that and apply it to these real life situations. Just like when we were talking about last time with that how to catch a predator shit. Don't forget that it's entertainment, right? You know, and uh, that's a that's a that's a really hard. Uh, what do you call that? Distinction to make or no variable to f- to consider a lot of the times because even when you're reading news, like you're looking it up, George, you're looking it up on the internet. Mm. Those are it's, all businesses, right? Yeah, it's entertainment, you right? Know, and t- especially with today, now journalism is oh, more so about skewed. getting you know clicks. Get how many clicks can you get? It's not really about being accurate and or being factual. factual. It's about being first and how many clicks can you get? It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's just that's why you should listen to podcasts because at least you know yeah, it's listen raw. to podcasts, and there's nobody dictating what we say. You know, our sponsors, they're just our sponsors. You know, they they don't fucking say we got nobody to answer to. I wonder if the podcasts are controlled by the FCC and their regulations. No, for communications. 
I don't think so. Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, cunts. FCC, go fuck yourselves. Well, yeah, I know, but so is is an on the air broadcasting radio. They're all controlled by the FCC. And so would be YouTube rather than the FCC. They have their own rules for distribution. I don't like your insolence. <laughs> <laughs> Who asked you, George? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man. I um. So yeah, back back to this bro that is going to jail or was convicted for uh, coercing her boyfriend's suicide. I mean, it's a real shitty thing to do. I'm not sold on the idea that she should be going to prison for it. I mean, ultimately, like you said, man, it, it's it was his decision. It's like, you know, he he committed his suicide. She didn't commit his suicide. That's right. You know? Even though she is, like, you know, like, that's like, a cunty is, thing to do. What is the law? Like, if I'm like, yeah, Jay, you know what? You should kill that motherfucker. I think there's a you law. You should kill him. You should kill him. I really I agree. I think he's an hey. asshole, and you should kill him. Am I at fault if you go and kill this guy? Well, I mean, Eminem, think of his music, bro, and how many people he influenced. Like, no, for let's take sake, uh, Char- Charles Manson. He never killed anybody. Ooh. He convinced people to kill people. That's true. I mean, that's, a, like, that's a big gray area. It's, it's kind of like Jigsaw, right, in those Saw movies. He never really killed people. Yeah, he didn't physically do anything. He gave I mean, them a choice to kill the, themselves. <laughs> the law is weird. It basically says that if you force a victim into an act that's contradictory to their own interests... But are you? But see, that's the key word. Force. Yes, are you? you by text. Them. Are you forcing anybody? So I, it says. It says in that specific case that intent is what is being argued. Her intent was for him to die. Hmm. I don't. That's hard to believe. I think her intent is to call his bluff. So then you argue in court. You know what I'm saying? Like you won't do it. Stop being a bitch. How's that? Uh, switching between us going good, easy. Testing out some new software, guys. Hope you enjoy it. But uh. Just checking in on young Jorge over there. Oh, that's it right there. Not young George. Young Jorge. Because we got young Jamie. We got young Jorge. And I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you guys what happened to me last week? I think Listen, I did. Man, it doesn't make you gay. It's... Well, no. It an experiment. Mean, like, he forced me. <laughs> no. So, last week, you know, every morning, I I wake up. I, I take natural garlic. I look for my smiley face cup. I take natural garlic every morning because it's very good for you. It's like an antimicrobial. It's good for your heart. Oh, so it's good for your health? Yeah, it's how'd great they, for your health. How'd right? it work out for you? Oh, it's great. I ended up in the ER. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? So my dumb ass, right? I you tried to eat a whole clove. I did. I tried to. I, 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 I smushed the, the clove to get, you know, to peel it. And this thing was huge. And it like spread out. It fanned out because I smushed it. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to fucking try to take this whole thing like a fucking porno star. Mm. Dude, this fucking thing went down my fucking esophagus and got stuck in my throat. No, I couldn't I couldn't even so believe annoying. what was going on. I'm like, wait a minute. I can breathe still because it's not in my but windpipe. It's more like, a, like just there. Yeah, like a pressure. You feel the pressure like right at the top of your throat. So now my saliva is pooling on top of this thing. So it's like building up. In my esophagus and then like leaking into my fucking windpipe and choking the shit out of me. I'm I, I was scared shitless. I really was at certain points. Dope. Like I was like, I literally was over the sink going, <gasps> <laughs> you know, trying to. I was gasping for air. So like, as soon as I I spit up all my saliva that was pooling up, then I could fucking breathe again, right? So I'm looking online. I'm trying not to salivate. But you can't. It's involuntary. I'm looking online. Hey, what do you do if food is stuck in your esophagus? I'm this like, fucking article and this doctor was like, you know, try drinking water. So I do that. It just pulls up and I fucking, right. you know, same thing. Chokes me out. Once it leaks all out of my mouth, I read further. It goes, the best thing to do is to drink something carbonated. Well, I don't drink soda. So I look in my fridge. I got beer in there. Blue Moon. Love Blue Moon. Motherfuckers Bro, about to die. Hold on. No. Just goes on a binge drinking session. Dude, I fucking crack this shit and start chugging the fucking beer. The carbonation from the beer starts fizzing up in my fucking so esophagus. It looks like you're having a seizure. You're foaming everywhere. Yeah, and it's leaking into my windpipe, and it's like, just won't stop. And I'm like literally gasping for fucking air. I'm, I'm thinking, wow, this is how I'm going to die. Out of all the things I did when I was a kid, out of all the things that I, you know, like... I drink, I smoke, you know, I don't smoke cigarettes, but I'm saying that, you know, I smoke weed sometimes here and there. I'm going to die from a garlic clove. I'm trying to, <laughs> I, when I shit you not, so I'm like, all right, I got to drive myself to the, to the ER or something. I go to an urgent care center, 
first thing the lady asked me behind the counter, she goes, can you breathe? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can breathe. She goes, have a seat. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't think you understand. Like, I can talk and breathe. <laughs> but as soon as the saliva starts building up and I had to stop twice on my way over to the urgent care in the middle of traffic, gasping for air, opening my door, spitting onto the road, people are looking at me like, what is that guy doing? Like, he must be hung over. That was not it at all. Jesus. I'm, I'm in the, the room. The the doctors are, you know, they're like, oh, my God, I smell garlic. I'm like, I'm really sorry. This is really embarrassing. Like, <laughs> So anyway, make a long story. Yeah. Make a long story short. You know, they're all joking around because a lot of time they get, you know, people that have swallowed forks and spoons. And this is what they're telling me. They're like, oh, trust me, this is nothing. Swallowing batteries. I'm like, what? What kind of people are these? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Anyway, they stuck a, a small camera probe down. Like, they put me under. I had to go to sleep. And they, with the camera probe, they pushed it down into my stomach. And I woke up and everything was fine. I was kind of... It's kind of scary, though, man. Kind of disappointed. He's like, I woke up, everything was fine. Yeah. I mean, it is. Well, I, don't, I don't know if they... Uh, I'm glad you made it, dude. It would have been, you know, it would have been weird doing this podcast here without you and with somebody else. But, kind of your spot. Well, you know what? Like, okay, I, and I kind of understand now. So, like, when freak accidents happen to people, like those two ladies that were parked, they were sitting in their car, and a tree falls on their car, and now they're dead. Like, yeah, five minutes before that happened to me, I'm not thinking in my wildest dreams, like, hey, my life is going to be threatened in about five minutes. Right. Like, I'm going to be fighting for my life. It's crazy. It's crazy how fast shit can change. You just don't... We take it for granted. You know what I'm saying? You're walking down the street or whatever. You're driving. All of a sudden, some car fucking sideswipes you and kills you. Or You just never know. Hug your loved ones, man. No shit. Hug them. Chop up your garlic. So what Fuck you your loved like, ones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chop up your garlic. Um, you were telling me earlier, your daughter got like punched in the face or something at school? Yeah, man. She fucking... I don't know. No, she didn't get punched in the face. I guess some kid ran into her, maybe head first, smashed up her whole fucking face. You don't think that's a, the teachers in that school trying to cover something up? I don't know, but I'm going there tomorrow. I'm going to fuck kick that kid the up. shit out. <laughs> so, Hell yeah, dude. No, she might have two black eyes, and she had a crazy bloody She's a little nose. young for two black eyes, no? Well, you know, it's 2019. <laughs> hey, she's going to hear this one day, man. There's no lines on this show. I know, right? He's like, no, so what are you talking bad. about, dude? She's eight. <laughs> she's ten, whatever. Yeah, but yeah, she weird. might have a concussion. I'm kind of that's scary, you know, I'm just dude. Praying for her, yeah. you know. I'm just, praying. I'm just praying for her. Hope you live. Thoughts and prayers, everybody. Send thoughts, thoughts and prayers. prayers, please. Yeah, it sucks. It's weird how um how helpless we get when something happens to our kids. Yeah, you just want to take the pain away. You just want to like, you know, give her some garlic. It's good when they're 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 a little older. What's really scary is when something goes wrong with them, like they they're hurt or they're injured or whatever. When they're too young to really communicate and articulate what's wrong right you know, like what's hurting like my son today even um you know he's five and he was jumping around he like jumped off the bed or some shit and he hurt his knee and he's like you know he's crying he's in pain yeah and you know there's a difference you know if you bang your knee and it's a bruise or if you like twist it and you know you might have torn an acl yeah 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 but, you know there's a lot of different things that could go wrong and he can't really, so me, I'm not a doctor, but I'm still trying to figure out, hey, what type of pain is this? And he can't really express that to me. Right. You know, so it's kind of like, I'm like, fuck, like, I don't want him to just tell him to walk it off. It'll go away because. It could be something serious. Yeah, if it's a bruise, that will happen. But if, you know, if he did something serious. Like internal bleeding. On, yeah, like, in your knee, I don't know, but maybe. But That's what like, a bruise is. Is that what a bruise is? I think so. <laughs> I that, don't know. What is that fancy ass word for a bruise? Contusion? That's so dope. Definitely not laceration. That's a cut. That's a cut, yeah. I love that. Like, I'll fucking... Some, you know, somebody's like, oh, what happened to your hand? Like, what's that bandit? And I'm just like, oh, I have, you know, like a paper laceration. Just I have a sucking chest wound. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. I learned that in the service. Sucking chest wound? Yeah, sucking. I think it's sunken. No, I think it's sucking like you're... <gasps> no, I you're think it's... Hole can in your we, fucking can you chest. check this, bro? Because you're telling me you went to the service. Yeah. You were out protecting our country, and you learned <laughs> a sucking <laughs> chest wound. Like a hickey? That's what that sounds like to uh, me. It's definitely sucking. Sucking. Yeah. So I don't know shit. So what's a sucking chest wound? A sucking or hissing sound made during... Like when you have a chest wound. That yeah, you, you have a hole. Mm. Yeah. You gotta like, put like, a piece of plastic over it. Puncture totally. wound to a pathway. Dope. Yeah. Was that the kind of thing where you like fucking take a pen and stab somebody in the heart? That's a tracheotomy. That's dope, dude. You ever do? No, that? not not a, in you the heart, in the throat. <laughs> you ever do that? You stab? Oh no, it's in the lung, bro. 
I watched fucking a lot of shows. You talking about Narcade? Uh, no, or no like, I'm not talking about a shot. I'm talking about you take a fucking, any kind of tube-like object, yeah. and you put it right in somebody's fucking lung. Now you they say can breathe. if you puncture a Maybe lung. a collapsed lung. Yeah. Like is a that collapsed what? lung, you puncture your lung, and they can breathe temporarily. Oh, I never heard of that. I heard, like, if someone's choking, you fucking stab no. them right here. So right. I got you, bro. If you ever collapse Somebody's lung. choking, you stab them. Oh, they did that in that movie. <laughs> that somebody somebody, like somebody in that broke movie. their foot, so you stab them in the neck. Hey, like in that movie Anaconda. You ever watch that movie Anaconda? I don't know. That scene sticks out but to me. But mine don't want none if you, unless you got buns on. Yo, fucking Anaconda. That's like Jennifer Lopez, one of her first movies. No, bro. it's Ice Cube. Bro, Jennifer Lopez is in that movie. J-Lo. Oh, yeah? She's bad. She's like 60 now, dude. Still bad as fuck. Little J-Lo. She's like age, ageless, timeless. I don't She's know. She's like a grape, dude. What is, sort what of like Jennifer mind? Aniston. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston looks a little weathered, though. But she's still... Actually, I shouldn't even say that. She's super hot. They're just two different types of hot. You know? Jennifer Aniston's still a sexy dude. Oh, yeah, of course. But Jennifer Lopez is more like a... She has damn sex mommy, appeal, yeah. Damn, mommy. Yeah. She got that booty, bro. Jennifer Aniston doesn't really have a big booty. Hey, so going back to what you were saying, as far as kids not, like, you know, being able to express themselves. When I was younger, I probably was, I was a little guy. I was probably... Still a little guy. I don't even know. Five, seven? I don't even know. Anyway, so... I'm, you remember that far back? Yeah. I'm taking a shower. I get out of the shower. I drop my, my, my towel underneath the door handle to the bathroom, right? So I go to bend down and pick up my towel and as I come up, I hit the back of my head on the door, the door handle, right? And it kills and the door's locked. We always lock the doors when we're in the bathroom, whatever. So I'm screaming and crying and of course my dad comes over and he knocks on the door and he's like, Jay, what's wrong? And I'm like, ah, you know, freaking out, right. little kid, whatever. And he starts getting like angry, like, Jay, open the fucking door. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Finally, I open it up and and I'm rubbing my head and he goes, "What's what, what's wrong? What are, what are you crying for?" And I like yelled at him. I go, "My head, you know, like my head hurts." Obviously, I'm rubbing my head. Dude, he got so pissed off that I yelled at him. He started kicking my ass. Interesting. So now, not only does my head hurt, now my fucking ass hurts because he's like beating the shit out of me because I yelled at him. Hmm. Sorry that happened to you, man. Yeah, I'm over it. It's <laughs> rough, dude. It's rough. You know, like it's. Parenting is, it's. I mean, people can people can say there's no right or wrong way to do it, but there definitely is. You know, there's definitely, you know, a lot of it is subjective to what you what you feel and how you choose to do it. But there's some things where, you know, like psychologically, is just not beneficial or in the best interest of the kid. Like I read this article the other day, or it might have even been a video, some stupid video that popped up on Facebook, and it was like. <clears throat> When a kid is, you know, like that upset where they're crying and crying, you know, at a certain age, their brain is not even like on almost, you know. So when you're yelling at them and trying to get them to explain what's going on, they're, when they're crying that much, you know, they don't feel safe. And then when you start to yell at them and, and really scream at them, it's like their brain is shutting off, you know. So they, they're not feeling safe and they're not able to express themselves. To be honest with you, it felt like some left-wing crazy shit to me, you know. Because mm. there's a lot of times where my kid is crying and I'm like, hey, the pain is going to go away. You've been hurt before. This is temporary. You need to explain to me what happened. Like, I need Pride to know is forever. what's going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I saw that video and at first I was like, oh, wow, this makes sense. And I'm like, wait a second. Like, I have kids. And their brain doesn't shut off when they're crying. Like, something just hurts. You know, we can right. distract them from what hurts and then they can... You know, articulate what's wrong, and then all of a sudden, the crying is done. That's right. So that that video just reminded me of how fucking you know soft people are getting when it comes to raising their kids. Don't get me wrong; I think you know what you just told me about your dad is a little extreme. I'm be honest with you. Well, but, you know, it's funny that you say that because so like when I talk about like my childhood, and I always say this like, and I'm not, I never, I'm not trying to play victim to anything, but I always yeah. say. You know, my father never came home and just kicked our ass. He ne like, he wasn't that guy. He wasn't like a drunken asshole that just would right. beat up his family and he whatever. It sober. It was it was always for a reason. Now, whether somebody believes that that's a legit reason or not, that's a whole other story. That's a whole different argument. I can't ever think of a time where my dad or my mother disciplined me for no reason. Like they're just fucking angry psychopaths. It was always. But you could agree that the the type of discipline or the level of discipline isn't really warranted and is exaggerated based on how, you know, upset they are or they're having a bad day. 
Well, it's yeah. all relative because so I here's here's what here's how I think of like my, how I was raised. I look back at my childhood and I think that compared to other kids my age, my peers, I think if you compared the way we were up, brought up, somebody would look at mine and go, "Man, you were physically and emotionally abused. Like you absolutely were." Mm. But if you don't compare them to that, let's say if you, you know, if you compare I don't I don't think we were physically and emotionally abused. I just think compared to everybody else we were. Does that make sense? Kind of. Like maybe society's sounds, getting a, is, is letting like, up. I don't think so. It sounds more like you're in denial. You know, no, like maybe when, like when a, like a, a woman is sexually assaulted and they just kind of uh, defend their assaulter, and they'll just say, "No, you know, it was my fault. It was my fault." Well, is is there? I mean, does my logic sound fucked up? I'm just thinking about that situation that you just told me, man. Of your, you know, like you crying because you're in pain. You know, so vulnerable, dude. You know, like with no towel on. Like you're literally there, sitting there, crying naked. And you emotionally... Well, that has nothing to do anything, being naked. I mean, it does to a sense that, you know, you're you're naked, you're vulnerable. In front of my father. No shelter. Hey, it's just closer a form of shelter. I'm just talking like, you know, I don't know, fuck it. But anyways, in that situation, <laughs> you're, you're a baby, you know? And yeah. you're crying, you're upset, you're in pain. And the only thing that your dad was focused on is that you... Being respectful. Not even... It's There's no disrespect in that whatsoever. That's just an emotional, like, I'm upset, like, ow, my head hurts. That's what happened. You know, I would never take that as disrespectful because it wasn't disrespectful. You were, you know. But the, and, and is it, that not subjective? And I'll give you another example. No, nah, so I'm like, just letting you know. Like, I, I think that is extreme. To, to yeah. Now, I think a lot of people would think that extreme. Because I, I, I think that's, that's you know, normal to think that's extreme. It, it would be abnormal to think that that's an okay to discipline a, okay and see, and, and, to discipline and, a child. And, and that's that's the thing. So, like like I said, my father never came home and just beat us. He wasn't like that. He, mm. he wasn't just an, this angry dude that used to fucking swing on Well. Not his family, at least. Right. Right? There was always... A, I can always trace everything back to a specific reason. Yeah. Like when I called him a faggot. But you don't... You don't and I don't... Know. Yeah. And I, and I, I didn't even I'm know sure what the... i you word, a faggot boy. <laughs> I didn't even know what the word <laughs> yes. meant, right? I was just, yeah. again, a little guy. And I was like, yeah, whatever, faggot. He was like playing ping pong with my older brother. He, he walked over to me and broke the ping pong paddle on me. Now, some people would be like, dude, that's some fucked up shit. Like you... Like you... You got your ass kicked. Well, yeah, I got my ass kicked, but I got my ass kicked because I called him a faggot, not because I just because my dad's angry and he just you right. know what I'm saying. So it sounds like you know there was just there was always a trigger, and me personally, again, I'm not saying that I'm right, but I think I think most people would agree that the level of punishment is probably a little extreme because I don't think that you parent the same way that your father did. No, it could, I mean it's di- obviously you different too because I have a girl, and yeah, you know. You but know. even if you had a boy, I don't think that I don't know. But I'm I'm huge just because it was literally beaten into me. I'm huge on respect, like with my daughter. Like I'm I'm just yeah. But there's a there's a big difference between fear and respect, you know. And I don't I don't think that you know anybody should confuse those two because if I, I agree with home, you, if my if my son is afraid to answer me back because he thinks he's going to be beaten, then he doesn't respect me. He's afraid of me. But if he doesn't answer me back because he knows that what I'm saying has value to it. Then that's respect. Yo, oh yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. I a hundred and fifty percent agree with you there. But I mean, like I said, when I when I compare the way that me and my siblings were brought up compared to the like again our peers, I'm like, oh yeah, one hundred fifty percent. Somebody would define that as child abuse and or emotional abuse. What's crazy is mo- most of your peers are Americans, but, correct? Yeah. And your your father right. and mother were born in other countries. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that, my that father. Could, it could easily be a you know a, a societal thing. That's the way they were brought up. Yes, I mean, they, they can only repeat what they were taught. You know, I mean, he got his ass kicked by monks and monasteries and shit in Ireland. Yeah. You know, that's just what it was. And Ireland had a different culture then too. Like mm. you could really be at the bar and fuck some dude up, and next thing you know, you guys are hugging and kissing, buy him a drink, and that's so you we, know, it's kind of like part we, of the culture. We say things like you know we're getting softer now or back in the day you know it used to be okay to do this and that there might be some benefits to it oh yeah that's what i'm I'm trying to you know i I like to think like are we getting softer are we just getting more educated and understanding how you know the development of a child actually works you know like because ultimately we do these things to teach our children lessons right like you don't hit them because it's not like a hey i'm stronger than you i'll show you it's to it's not a bully to not do that again so i think you know we also there's got to be a balance you know because we could easily just be learning that in the long term, it's more beneficial for the development of the kids 
to not be beaten all the time, you know, because right. you can talk to anybody our age or your age. And of course, the consensus is, yeah, we were whooped when we were kids because it was a different time. Right. You know, it doesn't mean it was a better time. It was just a different time where I think we might have overextended on how little we discipline our kids, because now it does seem like, you know, these young younger generations are coming up a little too, you know, um, feeling of invincible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I, yeah, a- absolutely. Like they, almost like they, f- they f- it's just it's entitled to some degree. They they feel like they can, they deserve certain things that they have, have never worked for or earned, like, like respect and and like you're young. Let's say you're 12 years old. Like you, you don't know your dick from your elbow. Really, you don't know anything about life. Mm. I mean, you know up until it's 12 year old. You know that capacity i mean i've been 12 years old before but a 12 year old has never been 39 so like obviously i have an understanding that he doesn't even know um yeah and i you know i grew up in a in the time and maybe even george jorge you know jorge when you were in school could your principal put his hands on you no. Oh, see, when I was in school, they yeah, could. He's so. not close, bro. You're old. He's not old. Like, no, he's 33. I'm 39. We're only seven years apart. Mm, he's close to my age, bro. I'm 29. He's 33. Yeah. No yeah. Jay's like, why not? That, I was going to school. <laughs> that, I, I actually remember that changing. Like, I remember that whole law changing. You know, I stopped getting beat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Principals used to have fucking paddles, dude. And That's they really like when you were, they would Which, beat the shit I, out of you. What I find it interesting is that not that it was like allowed in. The, the law, you know, the government allowed it, but more or less that any parent would ever stand for that. Because I feel like you don't, it doesn't even have to be taught to me or there's no societal norm to it. I feel like it's a very natural thing where if anybody were to ever try to physically harm or even emotionally harm or mentally harm my kids, you know, you know how it is. It's a wrap. Like, you know, my paternal instincts kick in and somebody's getting choked. Right. You know, like those are your kids, dude. I don't feel like anybody should be harming them ever you know teach them lessons but don't harm them you don't have you don't have to hurt them to teach them a but, lesson i mean again i'm just playing devil's advocate for dialogue and conversation's sake isn't harm subjective well i don't want to play devil's advocate i feel like that's i want to talk to you you know what i mean well no that, but that's yeah but when we play we're talking advocate, we, can, we can just argue both sides if we ever want to but i like to know how you feel about something and i want to talk about how i feel about something well i'm bringing it up because i'm, I'm tossing going back and forth in my mind like whether harm you know for instance there are some people if you call them stupid that's harmful okay you know what i'm saying and then there's other people like you can call them any name in the book sort of like me like yeah you can verbally say whatever you want i don't care put your hands on me now it's that's a whole different level you know what i'm saying some people they get really shooken up and offended and actually hurt inside by things that are just said just words you know which i understand hmm but I mean, that's, I mean, just going off of what you're saying, like harm, like that's a subjective. It, it's like it relies on the end user ultimately, right? I guess so. Hmm. I mean, like we're so like in my childhood, we were provided clothes, a home, food, love, maybe a different kind of love than what everybody's used to, and ass kickings and shit like that. But hey, you know, that's just what it what it was at the time. I think it's pretty common for, you know, like, you're, there's a little bit of an age gap between us, but your generation, I mean, I talk to most people that are 39, you know, they were probably whooped a lot more than my kids are and a little more than I was. No, well, I will, I will admit, even today at 39, 40, whatever, my my peers, whoever who's considered my peers, m- my story kind of sticks out still. Hmm. So, I mean, like, that, and in that sense, I'd be like, well, you know, yeah, maybe my dad was a little extreme there, but... Yeah, probably, but I mean, I he turned out fine. You know, he didn't kill you. It's like you turned out fine. You live in a basement. I wasn't gonna go that far. <laughs> Jesus, guy, don't sell yourself short. Nah, I, I'm it's just kidding. Not a ba- it's not a basement. It's our studio. <laughs> Fucking rent this whole space out, dude, for our studio. <laughs> hey, so did uh, how do you feel? You know, smoking cigarettes. I always think about. First of all, I think about if you're a cigarette smoker and you're listening to this, please fucking quit. Like, just quit. Like. God damn it. Four years in running. Smoking. Like, you know, there, there's no pros to them, but there are so many cons. Like, we know that you die from smoking them. Don't smoke them. But anywho, like, it baffles me to think that that used to be legal and it used to be advertised. It's still legal, but it used to be advertised hardcore. Like, 
how did anyways we're not going to talk about that whole corrupt system but imagine being somebody that smoked your whole life and then you say you know what i'm finally going to quit and i'm going to start vaping to kind of wean myself off or, or whatever however vaping helps you quit and then you're like this poor schmuck yesterday who was vaping and his vape pen exploded in his face and killed him what <laughs> yo young jorge pull that one up please Dude fucking is a vaping. vape pen? A it wasn't vape. a jewel, was it? I don't know what kind it was. I just know that I'm like, damn. Was this in America? Was this where was this? He's gonna check. Not that right I now. guess it doesn't geographically matter, it's but it's tough because I just see these like clickbaity uh, you know, headlines on Facebook and then I read them and I'm like, oh shit. But now I want to talk about it, so I am gonna rely on young Jorge here to get us the deets. Yeah, basically exploded in his face just before his twenty fifth birthday. Oh poor kid, twenty four years old. How man. did it explode in his face? Did it, does it say anything like Well, he was in a smoking and vaca- vaping store, so I'm assuming it was like some modded crazy vape rig, whatever. And it blew his face off? Basically. The battery exploded. That sucks. I mean, like, you would have to really manipulate, right? I I, I'm a, I don't really know. I'm not a mechanical like, engineer what, or, like, what electrical he, what engineer. What was he smoking? Gunpowder? Like, yeah, right. What, what you was smoking a fucking M80? Thing. Fucking fool, man. But, yeah, it sucks, man. Thoughts and prayers to him. Thoughts and prayers to him. He's <laughs> dead, bro. Thoughts and prayers to somebody, dude. That's a <laughs> shitty way to go. You know, like, you make a decision, like, I don't want to die young. I'm going to quit smoking cigarettes and start vaping. That's fucking crazy. Kablam. Actually, I quit smoking four years ago, and I'm like... Good for you. Know, you. How'd yeah. you quit? Did you just quit cold turkey, or...? Yo. And I'll tell you exactly I like, how I did it. I feel like I, you know, like, again, I, I never smoked, so I don't know exactly what it is, but I know my, you know, like, mentally, when I want to do something, what I'm willing to go through to get the results I want. But it's like, a lot of people just say how hard it is to quit and they've tried and they can't do it it's like man when you really want to quit you will you'll just stop something that's will pretty click. much anything yeah something will click and you will just stop smoking you know you know what i hate saying this because it sounds like a real like cunty J o'leary thing to say yeah i get it i get it but i mean it, you have to be mentally strong to fucking quit that's just what it is so you're saying these smokers are weak bitches is that what you're saying Yep. Damn, dude. No. <laughs> Damn. No, I'm not saying that they're weak bitches. I'm just saying that they're weak bitches. Our next episode <laughs> is brought to you by Newport. No, you know what? I, honestly, I like so when when I really think about it though, like I'm four years I, I that I quit, and at any given point, I could probably start up again. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, like yes, I've I, I quit smoking, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna you know. I might relapse at some point or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm hoping relapse, I don't. Relapse, bro? Calm the fuck down. I don't down, know what dude. the word cigarettes. is. <laughs> Calm down, No, we're buddy. talking about addiction, though. You know what I'm saying? We're going to relapse. Relax, yeah, no, bro. no, no. Relax. I, I'm talking about addiction. I'm, I'm trying to use the term lo- loosely, um, but it's happened already. I quit for two years, and then I, out of nowhere, I just started again. You know, like, when you, ask, you, ask, you ask yourself why. Just to piggyback off that idea, have you ever seen that documentary on Netflix um, with Killer Mike in it? It's fucking called something. Do you know who Killer Magic Mike is? Magic Mike? You know what Killer Mike is? No. All right, so I've never heard of him until about a week ago. He's like, he's a rapper, but it's a pretty dope documentary, dude, on Netflix. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Trigger warning? Yeah, there you go, man. He's, um, you know, he's very, very... What's it about? Like, give me the You want to read that plot for us? Yeah, hit us up, young Jorge. What's the plot? You can probably... Netflix can deliver it's it better little than hope. I can. Rapper and an activist, Killer Mike, puts his revolutionary ideas about achieving social change into action. Yeah, you, you'd hate it. Why? You'd hate it. Because, you know, like, it really highlights the social inequalities for minorities, and I know your stance on that. Yeah. You know, you know what? Look, I, I don't want anybody to ever get it twisted with, now that you just brought it up. <laughs> Do you like the way I worded that? Yeah. I'm like, Jay really disagrees with equality for minorities. <laughs> Number one, Jay is a minority. Half. He's not a fucking minority. Look at you. I know. I look I look like you. You look like you were fucking around. <laughs> you look like you were rounding up Jews. For concentration yeah. camps. Nine. Um, I will never ever take away the fact that, you know, like, America fucked up and, you know, and I say fucked up even loosely. I, I just think that, you know what, over the course of human history, the, sh- the big fish kind of eats the little fish. That's just what happens. So who are the big fish in this scenario? The, obviously the white people. Who are the little fish? Obviously the black people. So you're saying it's just natural selection that... The white well, fish should kidnap 
or not kidnap, but purchase. I'm going to say this: that slave them. Well, no, white people didn't start slavery. So, like, you know, black people were enslaving their own before white people even, you true, know. True. So, I mean, like, it, it was just even today. There's 40 million slaves right now today. Where they at though? Uh, uh, Cambodia, China, you know, all they're kind of spread out. India. Um, slavery has been a part of human history since since the beginning of time. Such a and I hate shitty thing, man. Like, well, you know what it is? It's that we we live in again. We live in America, and we are taught a certain way that gives us a biased viewpoint. Like we we're not we're taught very sheltered, man. Like we have a very sheltered understanding of what else is going on in the world. And I, I don't want that to take away from the fact. Like I empathize with those African Americans that went through that. I mean, that's real. That's a real shitty life. I, I can only imagine. But I think we're at a point today where, you know, people are still piggybacking off of that tragedy and it's not applicable today. That's just me. That's just my, I, I, you know, I don't want to sound cold hearted, uh, but I'm trying to be realistic in the sense hmm. like, dude, you're 39 years old, had nothing to do with you. Yes, it had something to do with your great grandfather and et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I recognize that and I, you know, but don't give me the speech. Like, don't. Okay, your opportunity is the same as exact as mine, or is the same exact as an Asian guy, or the same exact as, as a, as a whatever. If you want to do something, you can do it. You just have to fucking get over that victimized mentality hump. I mean, how how do you how do you feel about that? How, am I like way the fuck off course? I mean, there are successful black people in this country. There are. We had a president that was black. I mean, don't tell me that you can't make it. You can. Mm. Yeah, it's tough to say, man. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, me personally, I've never really dealt with any hardships of being minority. You know, I, I mean, I have when I went, you know, as a kid, if I went to the basketball court, all the basketball players thought I was white, so I got picked last, you know. And People thought I, you were white? Yeah, that they, they wasn't black, you know, so if you got me or No, I know, but kid, I mean, I would pin you as Hispanic. Yeah, but it's not soccer, bro. It's basketball. You know, they picked me last. Just Why does it got to be soccer? Hispanic man, what do you want from me, dude? You know, I was fucking, <laughs> I came out the wound, able to dribble the soccer ball. But or if you know, if I because I grew up in the you know in I get, you could call it the hood, man. And uh, if I went to the barber shop, I feel like I would get overlooked. But nothing really serious, you know. I never really dealt with social inequalities. Wait, 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 hold on. Let's rewind that. You went to the barber shop and you were overlooked. What do you mean? Did you go to a, like a predominantly white barber shop or did you go to a no, no, Hispanic like, barber shop or like nah, black barber yeah, shop or what? In the, you know more definitely a black barber shop you would call it. But, you know, just uh, sitting there, fucking waiting for them to call my name and everybody would get picked. People would come in after me. Hey, you good? You next? Boom. And just, you know, sat there. Just obviously being yeah, up. We ain't up fucking with that spick. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is what it is. But, you know, to I've seen, you know, I have, you know, a friend of mine um, is black and I, I've just, there's shit that I, he deals with that I don't deal with, you know? And I feel like it's so rooted in our country's history, like in our history and a bigger percentage of the population than people realize still has a lot of, you know, like buried racism in them. And when I say, like, I can give you examples of me going to the liquor store and purchasing alcohol and he's the same age as me and them not even asking for my ID, you know, and him going 20 minutes later, you know, after we ran out of beer and he's going to purchase alcohol, and they're asking him for ID, his ID, and then they're giving him shit because it's an out-of-state ID, and, you know, just making it difficult for him. Could it or, possibly listen, be that he's young? No. He looks Same younger? Me. He doesn't, though. You know, like, it is what it is, man. You you can make excuses for it or try to rationalize it if you want, but I think... No, no, you know, no I'm trying to just a, eliminate all trying to rationalize it. It's, you know, what you're doing, and, and it's okay. That happens a no, lot. No, I'm really not. Anywho, so, like, there's other situations where he would walk in with me and another buddy of mine so there's three of us you know my, my buddy alex is a white dude yeah you know i'm you know half and half you call me whatever and he's a black dude you know so alex walks in sits at the bar no problem i walk in sit at the bar no problem you know my buddy walks in with us and the bartender says you know like oh deliveries are upstairs you know are you looking for deliveries and we're like what the fuck are you talking about you know what i'm saying so it's just like something like that would never happen to me or getting, you know, just getting pulled over, you know, like he goes to school in a, you know, a neighborhood that's an upper class neighborhood where he's a minority and he's constantly getting fucked with, getting pulled over over 
No real shit, man. You but know? don't you think that that also applies if the roles are reversed? Meaning, if you go into a, if let's say, if, if myself and I, this has happened to me in in mm. in my life, yeah, if I walk I can't, into, I can't speak on that because I I just haven't dealt with it at the level. Well, I'll tell you does. first firsthand. If, if I go, for instance, you know, when I was a kid, if I went into East Orange, New Jersey, it's all predominantly black. I don't know what it is today. It might have changed over the last twenty years, but. Like, you would get the shit kicked out of you. Mm. In fact, I was dating an Italian chick out of Edison, New Jersey, and she was scared to visit her mom in a cemetery because the cemetery was in East Orange, New Jersey. She was like, I haven't seen her in X amount of years. And I'm like, fuck that. Let's go right now. I mean, the same shit happens mm. on the other side of the fence. Like, you walk into a, you know, a let's say, a black-owned bar and you're white, you're going to catch some shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. I don't know. You know, there, there. I just think there are levels to it. You know, and I can't really speak on behalf of black people. experience. You know? Yeah, right. I haven't. Ex- I told you my level of experience. But that's it's the way. way that's the it's re- waiting longer at the you know the barber shop and not getting picked for basketball games. It's not an actual like, hey, we're trying to give a hindrance on your progression in life. You know, I, I've actually, unfortunately, have had uh, friends uh, in Newark, New Jersey that were literally left for dead on a fucking sidewalk he goes outside to smoke a cigarette it's again a predominantly uh, minority black neighborhood in newark um we're in a bar he goes outside to have a cigarette we're like hey where's pat we go outside he's on the fucking concrete bleeding blah blah blah. like Mm. he just got jumped right the first responders were also african-american they take their sweet ass fucking time they put him in the ambulance the first thing they ask us is what are you guys doing here you know what I'm saying? So it that's why I really think the way I do. I, I don't think it's necessarily uh you know, it's it's not one sided at all. But unless you are in So but when you unless say you're the minority not, you can't say that it's not one sided. You don't feel that it's based on your experience, but No, absolutely I do. Statistically, I mean it kind of is one sided. I don't think so at all. I think depends so what is your what I think is if you argument? go into Chinatown in New York and you're not Chinese, you're gonna you're gonna catch some shit. What is your argument for like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, inconsistent incarceration rates and harsher penalties, you know, by judges based on the color of somebody's skin. Because that's not my opinion. You know, that we can look that up. Actually, can you pull that up, George? And Any kind of data that shows that blacks are incarcerated at a higher rate per capita than whites are. In all and honesty. And that their penalties are... Harsher. Or right. I, times more. I mean, you you know, we've talked about this before on Facebook and stuff, and we've seen the arguments. I, I believe it's directly tied to socioeconomic class, meaning, and there's statistics that prove that. If you make less money, you're more apt to 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 do crime and violent crime. So you're more they, apt to... So why are, are, you know, blacks punished at a... Because they're poor. Dis- like, why... No, no, no. Why are there the discipline from the judge? You know, their sentences... Why is that different? Because a a wealthy person can afford to pay a like lawyer, yeah, to put in time into their case, where an unwealthy person can't afford the lawyer to put time into their case. Hmm. So I mean, like the justice system is skewed based off of everything's money, and I'm not saying that that's a hundred percent why you know African Americans are incarcerated more, but it's never brought up, and it's it's a it's a it's a statistical fact almost. So would you say then, it, based on all of that, it's probably safe that your... I would say more white people control more and more of the wealth. And that's why it looks like... That's why it's a skewed that's perspective. That's why it is, not looks like. It, it is No, 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 no. Uh, what, what I was going to say is, is, that's why it looks like there's an injustice in color, but it's, n- it's not. It's an injustice it's, in wealth. Okay, so wh- then... That's has nothing still, to do with you. Still one and the same. Though. I mean, why, well, why no, is put it so this much way. of the, why is so much of the money controlled by the white population versus the black population? But that's a that's a whole different argument. I'm, I'm curious as to why is that though. Well, it sounds like you're pretty educated on the subject. I'm 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 not. I want to learn. You know, because I, I what I, you just said to me makes sense that it's you know a socioeconomic thing, and yeah. you know if it seems like um, you know whites get lesser penalties, it's because they can afford better attorneys that put the time into their case to defend yes. them. I can understand that, you know, that that's it falls along logical. the lines of even your health. When you're poor, you eat shittier foods. Mm-hmm. Right? If you're wealthy, you eat healthier foods. Statistically. Not everybody, obviously. But even your health comes down to how much money you make, how much income you really have. 
So I mean, like everything falls off of wealth. Well, I, don't, I don't want. I don't want to get too sidetracked. I don't. Oh, want, I don't mean to interrupt you. <clears throat> no, no. Go but ahead. what? What? Is, what would you say to an answer to why the you know white population controls so much more of the wealth than that black? That population? I can't answer. Okay. I mean, like when you look at. So if you go back in time and you look at the Europeans, the Europeans totally came up faster than let's say the Asiatic. Or whatever I don't know what it's called the 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 African American culture. Do you, do you think that the whites want to keep it that way? And I hate saying the whites, guys. You know, I'm sorry that it's coming out that way, but do you feel like the white population wants to keep it that way? Absolutely, and I don't blame them well, in that, a that's fucked where up think, way. That's where I think there, you know, there's an issue. You know, because well, good because it, it's not fit. so. When you say that somebody has an equal opportunity as you, they legally they don't. Are you talking yeah. legally, or are you talking we, about we like can just, talk about legally you know that's just but that's what we're only bound by we're bound by the like as far as as long as everybody has a legal equal opportunity then everything's kosher regardless of well i'm saying as far as the lawmakers i don't think everything's kosher i mean there could be an imbalance still and it's not legal whatever but i'm saying the laws only make sure that everybody's legally you know that doesn't really mean that everybody's hearts change and all of a sudden no one's racist and all of a sudden everybody you know it's getting along so when it comes to laws that are put in place to, for example, like equal opportunity laws, yeah, what's your take on that? Do you think those shouldn't be there or they should be there? I, I absolutely 150% do not believe in affirmative action and all that stuff. Because now you you're... Feel that you feel that just the most qualified people should be given the opportunity. Absolutely. You, right, I don't disagree with you on that. See, once, you, also, once yeah. you start favoring a certain group, and I don't care if it's the white group, the black group, the chink group, the spit group, the mick group, the whatever, now you're skewing the law. Now you're favoring, like you're purposely favoring one side. You are, correct. You know, and, and unfortunately, so like when, when, when people tell me that, you know, oh, systemic racism, I, I'm, I'm just like, you know what, you have been sold something that's 150% false. That's tough, though. You you can't really say it that way because it's not false, man. This, it is. Th- this, this country By definition, has, I'm saying. This country has a history of systemic racism. Well, not necessarily. Necessarily, yes, dude. <laughs> very very recently. Hold on. Very well, recently. I didn't see it that way. <laughs> well, very recently, yeah. you know, if you were black in this country, you didn't have the same rights as a white person. Is that true or false? That's true. So you wouldn't say that that's a form of racism in the system? If blacks were looked at as lesser, uh, at a lesser value than whites, that's what a, that's what systemic racism is, right? Racism in our well, system of government. When you apply, okay, so that was at a certain time, yes, and I agree. But with what that. I'm saying is, it, that it's, doesn't apply it's today. Systemic, you know, it, it may be being phased out, but it's it's still there. No, it, it is phased out, and it's been phased out. Civil yeah. rights laws. There, there's there's loopholes when you look at the thirteenth and incarceration rates, but that's we'll save that for another talk. I think people it's confuse. Oh, hold on, I don't okay, want to. I want to. I want to. I want to stay on the um, course here. Yeah, we were just talking about the you know affirmative action laws and things like that. So it's. I think it's easy for us to look at it and say no, it should be the most qualified people. But who's who's looking out for somebody that may be a minority and maybe more qualified? but is being overlooked because they don't fit into this category of... Because earlier you said the whites want to keep the money with the whites, and you don't blame them for that. So if the whites have the money in, you know, company X, yeah, and they need a new CEO, but they don't want to interview the black guy because he's not white, and they want to keep the money white, he's being overlooked now. You don't feel like there should be some form of representation for him to get a fair shot I think based it's, on his qualifications? I think it's chasing the wind because if you're in a if you're in an African American community, that same shit would happen. It, you're right, and it is happening. And, and with yeah. that that documentary I was telling you about with Killer Mike, his whole mission is to keep that happening. And he brought pretty interesting t- uh, statistics. I think like a Jewish community can keep. I don't know if you if you're able to pull this up, George, a ho- young Jorge, but in a Jewish community, they can take a dollar and keep that dollar in the Jewish community for like 28 days before that dollar goes into another ethnic group's, you know, pockets per se. Wait, what? And like, yeah. So if you, if you're a Jewish person yeah. and you spend a dollar in a Jewish community, yep. so now you just got your dry cleaning done. That mm-hmm. dry cleaner buys their groceries, but they're buying from a, you know, a Jewish, Jewish farm. farm. That farmer, you know, goes to the salon, but they're going to a Jewish salon. So that dollar circulates in the Jewish community for 28 days before it's released. Excuse me. 
Chinese people, you know, they have Chinatown. That dollar is, you know, circulating in some days. You know, white people, you know, and it's really, it's, there's a, it drops off significantly to when you get to the black community. Are you, did you able to find anything enough? Try Googling, like, uh, so you're saying, try uh, Googling Killer Mike, um, community dollar stats or whatever the case is. So even if you have to, I don't know. I just want to make sure I'm getting, I'm understanding what you're saying. So like in first episode. In African American communities, the dollar does not stay within the community. Is that Correct. what you're saying? Very oh. for, for a very small amount of time, I think it was like black dollar stays in the community for six hours. Six hours is exactly what I was going to say. Versus what for the Jewish community? It says twenty plus. So what does this mean, though? What, who cares? I just explained what it means. Well, it, it matters, you know. Um, and what his mission is is to go to these black communities and, and quote unquote, like he said, live black for a day. Or a couple of days, meaning like, hey, you know, you got some money wherever you go. You you go to your drug dealer, you go to the barbershop, wherever you're spending your money, make sure that it's a black owned business. You know, and I it's interesting because to to piggyback on what you said earlier, you know, about the whites wanting to keep the money with the whites and you don't really see anything wrong with that, it is happening, you know, and it does seem like every community is able to keep the money within their community in their community and they're not there's nothing wrong nobody's looking at it like they're doing anything wrong. But for some reason and all I can attest it to is the history of the country, but for some reason it seems like the black community struggles to keep their money in the community. Well, I, you know what? It's, I think it's part of the nature of the beast of how history has unfolded. Uh, right now, African Americans are put at the disadvantage, not because of their skin color, but because of the wealth uh, distribution or lack thereof. Mm. Right? They're, they're put... When, when you're poorer, you're, you're just, you're, you're almost like, you're sucking everybody's dick. You're like fucked. Yeah, you're yeah, fucked. You're fucked. Like, you know, that's just what happens. And I'm not saying, forget whose fault it is and whatever. I mean, that's just kind of what it is. But I want to kind of explain what I said. Like, I don't blame. So whoever's on top, let's say the white people are on top. I don't blame them for their logic and saying, why would we sacrifice power and wealth just to have another group come up? I, I, I don't necessarily blame them for thinking that way. Now, let's say, if, and I would say the same exact thing if it were, you know, if, if the African American community was on top. I, I don't really necessarily blame them for, like, going, hey, look, no, we want to keep everybody else down because we're well, on top. This. What if it felt like, because I understand what you're saying. Yeah. But I don't think that's necessarily how the black community views it it i think it may seem well of course they're on the yeah, bottom it, but that's where it's an issue i don't think it's a but somebody hey, has to be on, on the top, bottom but it, it it seems like everybody else i hate saying that because it makes me sound like a well it is it is what it is it's how you feel everybody else <laughs> seems to be on a level playing field and there's one community but on that's the not bottom. true is it not true no, not? nobody's really on a level playing field that's who's the top dog i would assume i'm totally speculating is that white people own a majority of the wealth in America, maybe even the world. I don't know. Because it might be skewed by numbers. China has like 40 billion thousand you obviously quadrillion people. You obviously haven't seen Black Panther. Oh, no, I haven't. Wakanda's rich as fuck, bro. But see, everything that I'm saying is... I, I'm taking the skin color out of it. Like, you know, I'm... I'm I mean, it, it has nothing that, to do with... I think that with, sounds good. I think that sounds good to say that, but I don't think that's the reality of it. Well, no, the reality is what it is, regardless of skin color. It just so happens that right now white people are on top or perceived to be on top. And let's say minorities are on the bottom. But if time goes on and roles reverse, I would still have the same exact argument, but in the favor of the of the minorities. But you would, know you what have, would you have the same exact argument, though, if everybody was on top and Filipinos were on the bottom? Absolutely. Why would that change? Only bottom. Yeah, why would that change? Because then it would affect you. You know, I, I feel Not, like right now it doesn't affect you, and it's and it doesn't. Well, affect it does me because I'm half minority, and I've felt I've felt Listen, the prejudice, man. and I've felt the it, stereotypes as growing up. It, it's it's tough, but I you know it's going to be tough to hear this, and I feel like I feel like in America when you talk about minority and you're talking about these racial issues, but or it doesn't apply just to blacks. But it, it, there's white, and then there's black, and maybe you can throw in Spanish, you know. But but Spanish is really it so. Is, what do you call Indians? Not they're not black. American Indians, East Indians, Asians, Chinese. They're not black nor white nor Hispanic, and they are definitely a minority. Yeah, they are a minority. But I don't think any minority Those issues don't you know, they I don't know, man. I, I it feels <clears throat> like the um 
the real injustice is not against just minorities. It's against the black community specifically. That might be true. So again, why, I mean, only, why, why is there so much? No, like, why is there so many, so much support for to to fix inequality in the black community if it doesn't really exist? Because you it's th- a bullshit narrative. It's it's it's, and you to think, some degree, and you think the uh, bullshit not narrative is everybody's bought into it. Not every most well, people, no, not most every. people do that. The the huge majority agree that there's a social injustice against the black community. That's you're, not you're, necessarily you're, true. It is true. No, a lot of right-leaning people don't believe that there's an injustice. I think they believe that there's an injustice. Whether they're black or white. I think there's. they believe there's an injustice. They just... It might not be as defined. They disagree on, yeah, on how to handle it. Well, no, I think defining the injustice itself, like where, where somebody would say, you know what, I'm being suppressed or oppressed because of my skin color. And then somebody like me comes along and goes, dude, this has nothing to do with your skin color. We just had a black president. How can you say that you... You can't make it in this country. You absolutely 150% can. There's millionaires that are black. I mean, just because you're not making it, that doesn't mean that... That it's because you're black. Right. Right. And it's it, it kind of falls in the same uh, category of how I feel about, let's say, being gay. Like a lot of gays or homosexual, they anytime something happens to them, they'd be like, oh, it's because I'm gay. Like, no, dude, you're fucking what, dude? up. I know a lot of gay people, and I don't know any that act like that. Yeah, how they're, when they're being treated a certain way, they're like, oh, it must be because I'm gay. I'm what? like, nah, dude, it has nothing to do with that. I have never met a gay person that... Oh, my God, I've, that, I've experienced I, I've it a very, very times. seldom have I met a gay person that plays the victim card. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, no, no, no. It's yeah, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen to you. I just, you know, it's not something that I've dealt with. But I think it's just an overthought. Like, you're thinking way too much into it. It's not that you're gay. It's not that you're black. It's not that you're Chinese. It's not any of those things. It's just it's that the you fact broke, that... Bitch. <laughs> Well, kind of, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you're maybe you're broke or So maybe... why don't we get, you know, like, more shit and the odds stacked against us? We're, we're pretty broke. Well, we do. <laughs> Our food options are different than wealthy people. Nah, you know what it comes down to? It comes down to just what you value and what you don't, you know? If you want to eat good food, you can. You just got to drink a little less beer. I look at it like this. Like, you and I, we're, we're different ethnicities and cultures. We're obviously, we're both American, but... We're in the same boat. I think the any any black man that's, you know, we're all in the same boat. Cheers, like, we're all fucking poor, and we all, you know, like a, a, any black person is poor. Is that what you just said? No, no, I'm saying anybody that is poor, Jesus. whether they be black or whatever, like you can, you know, a poor black man can hang out with a poor white man. They have a lot in common. Two homeless guys, right? Just like a rich white man can hang out. President Trump hangs out with President Obama. They break bread. They don't look at skin color. Why? Because they're fucking wealthy as shit. Rich as. Fuck, yeah, bro. and they don't give it like there. There is no equal inequality there. Just like homeless people, there's no inequality there too. Are we rambling on? All right, well, let's wrap this shit up then, bro. It's been real. Had a good time. Cheers. I love black people. Salud, man. I have nothing to drink. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. And real quick, we just want to again thank our sponsors, Division Three Auto. Your one-stop shop for anything you need for the vehicle, transmission, engine. doesn't fucking matter what you need. Just go see George down at Division Street Auto, 595 Division Street, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. You can also catch them on Facebook. And again, thanks for on- thanks to Onlyville Tires down in Providence. Go check Dory out. Um, Onlyville Tire, you can catch them on the web. <laughs> Sorry, Jay's fucking with me over here when I'm trying to read this. AJ's Drywall and Plaster. Thanks again for the sponsor, sir. Whatever it is, additions, acoustic ceilings, renovations, new construction, AJ's got you covered, man. Plaster, drywall, all that good shit. And I feel like I might be forgetting one more. And Tops Showroom for ga- Top Showroom Gallery. Sorry, I can't talk right now, guys. It's been a long one. Uh, whiskey's hitting us. Top, show- Top Showroom Gallery. They got everything you need for lighting, whether it's indoor, outdoor, LEDs, um, retail, all the fixtures you need. You know, you need some indirect lighting, you need some chandeliers, you need direct lighting, sconces, landscape lighting. They got you covered. You know, all different color temperatures, whatever it is you need. They'll come out to your house, they'll come out to your place of business, field consultations. Hit them up. I think that covers everything, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye.